So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers found a way to keep Mike Evans on the roster for the next two years, and they just also extended Baker Mayfield as well for three years, worth up to $115 million. That's the max that he can make on this deal, but it's $50 million fully guaranteed. I love this deal. It is basically the same type of deal that Geno Smith got last year with the Seattle Seahawks. You can move off this contract in the next year or two, and I expect from Baker Mayfield to continue to get better with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They made the NFL playoffs this season, and to keep him and Mike Evans, that's a major plus with this team. This is a team that had major cap issues last season. That's why Baker Mayfield only signed a one-year deal with this team, and it was also a proven year deal with Baker Mayfield as well and he went out there and he exceeded expectations 28 passing touchdowns that was the seventh most in the NFL with 10 interceptions and he also had 4,044 passing yards on the season as well this was a great year for Baker Mayfield and a very good year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as a whole because a lot of people wrote this team off you had the quarterback battle last offseason between Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask he came in and he took the job now I am worried about this team on the offense side because Dave Canales is no longer the offense coordinator with this team and in just one year he did wonders with Baker Mayfield and this entire offense. They still have problems running the football. For the last couple of years, they have not been able to run the football at all. They were dead last in rushing in terms of just getting effective usage out of the run game. And Tom Brady's last season in the NFL and this season, it wasn't too much better. The offensive line needs work. Ryan Jensen will no longer be with the team. He's retired and he's missed back-to-back -back seasons, dealing with a torn ACL. This is a guy that missed all the last season when it was Tom Brady's last season. And he came back and played against the Dallas Cowboys. That's the last time he saw action. So you're going to have to definitely go out there and find a true center with this team. Look for them to try to do that through the NFL free agency period or definitely do that through the NFL draft in the first round. But in order to get a better run game, they have to work on the offensive line up front. I think that Becker Mayfield is more than good enough to go out there and get this team over the hump. This is a team that made the NFL playoffs. They defeat the Philadelphia Eagles in great fashion and they lost a tough game against the Detroit Lions as well. Now, Becker Mayfield will have to be better against some of the top tier teams in the NFC. Against the Detroit Lions, they beat him twice. They beat him once in the regular season, and they beat him in the NFL playoffs. And he played better in the playoffs, but he has to take better care of the football when he goes against some of these top-tier teams in the NFC. But I expect for the weapons that they do have for Baker Mayfield to be better long-term with this team. We'll see what the brand-new offensive coordinator can cook up as well. But this is your third straight season going with a brand-new offensive coordinator. They fired Byron Leftwich. They went with Dave Canales, who was a major hit, who is now with the Carolina Panthers, and who is their main offensive play caller and their brand-new head coach. And you're bringing in a brand-new offensive coordinator as well. But the first thing this offseason, besides keeping the core guys that you already have under contract is to get the run game situated and to give Baker Mayfield a fighting chance on the field because this team has been one dimensional for the last couple of years because they cannot run the football up front. The rest of the offensive line is solid. I like Tristan Wirfs. Tristan Wirfs is a very good tackle in the NFL and I expect for him to when it's time for him to get paid they're going to pay him up as well. It's just the interior of the offensive line. Robert Hainsey is not a true starting center on a consistent basis in the NFL and you just look at him. I think that he'll be a better guard than he is a center but they have to get a better push up front and I spoke of Mike Evans earlier in the video a thousand yards every single season in his career and he's not just getting garbage time stats this is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL and he's going to go down as the best Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver of all time he won a Super Bowl championship a couple of years ago with Tom Brady and his play has not declined I know a lot of people look at his age and are saying hey Eventually, he's going to decline as a player. We haven't seen that just yet. Smooth route runner. He's going to go out there and body people up and, see, and can still get past people as well. He's one of the best wide receivers in the game. You also have Chris Godwin, who is a very good number two wide receiver. 1,024 receiving yards, two receiving touchdowns. Now, even though Chris Godwin is still a very good wide receiver, he hasn't been that same wide receiver that he was before he tore his ACL. He doesn't run the same, but he's still very effective with this team. He just doesn't have the same juice in the open field. The route running is still there, but I still miss some 
of those explosive plays that he was able to get earlier in his career. Like I mentioned before, not a bad wide receiver. He's just not the same in the open field. And he is clutch as well, especially on second and third down with Baker Mayfield. I like Cade Iden a lot. This is a guy that has potential to be a top target on this team at the tight end spot. 455 receiving yards on the season, four receiving touchdowns. He averaged 10 yards a catch as well. When you look at a guy like Russell Gage, Russell Gage has not been able to catch on with this team. And I look at a guy like Russell Gage, man he's been dealing with those injuries and that's one thing with him it's the injuries he hasn't been that major hit he was a very good wide receiver with the Atlanta Falcons injuries has held this guy back and he hasn't been able to go out there and be that true number three wide receiver we'll see what they do with him moving forward but I could definitely see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers moving off of Russell Gage and putting in another guy in that spot but Rashad White very solid running back even though the rushing numbers were not great for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he's a very good running back. Yes, he averaged only 3.6 yards to carry, but he had 990 rushing yards on the season and six rushing touchdowns. I think Rashard White is a very good running back to have on your team. Just need to work on your offensive line. As far as the defense, they're going to release Shaquille Barrett in the next couple of days. In the next 72 hours, he will no longer be with this team. And that's sad because a couple of years ago during that Super Bowl push, Shaquille Barrett was guaranteed to go out there and have double digits sacks in the season only four and a half sacks this season three forced fumbles one interception he wasn't that same pass rusher after he tore his Achilles with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and by releasing him it opened up money to go out there and pay guys like Baker Mayfield and to pay guys like Mike Evans as well and I do feel bad for Shaquille Barrett because he had some terrible things going going on off the field dealing with his family so my prayers and condolences are with him and I really do root for him moving forward if he can find another place in the NFL just unfortunately his time with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers has come to an end but he did get a Super Bowl ring with this team and you also look at the other pass rushers with this team Vita Vea is one of the best interior defense alignment in the NFL he's phenomenal Vita Vea has been a major hit with this team only five and a half sacks on the season and two forced fumbles but he's going to go back there he's going to stop the screens he's going to push the pocket and he's going to rush up field as well he is a mountain of a man and the way that he's able to go out there and run up field at the weight that he is is very impressive to see Kalijah Kansi is also a guy that they selected in the first round he had four sacks on the season he missed some time dealing with an injury if he can stay fully healthy and you have him with Vita Vea, and Vita Vea can stay fully healthy, healthy, you have a very good defensive line that can stop the run, and they can get to the quarterback. And that's one thing that Todd Bowles has prided himself on since he's been a head coach in the NFL. Even going back to the New York Jet days, he prides himself on defense and getting to the quarterback, whether that's by blitzing or doing whatever it takes. And you also have Yaya Diaby, who was a rookie with this team. He led this team in sacks. He was very good this season. Seven and a half sacks, one forced fumble. I expect for him to get better over the next couple of years as well. You also went out there and you're going to be able to retain Antoine Winfield as well, who is one of the best safeties in the NFL this season. Six forced fumbles on the season, three interceptions, 12 pass deflections. And the one thing by Antoine Winfield, this guy is known to make guys get touchbacks. He is known to make you fumble at the goal line. When another, when the opposing team is about to go out there and score, he just knocks the ball out of people's hands. Look at what he did against the Atlanta Falcons with Desmond Ritter. Look at what he did against the Carolina Panthers with DJ Chark. Just knocks the ball out of his hand and goes for a touchback. He's saving six to seven points off the board to help his team out. And he's also a pick machine as well. So he's one of the best cover safeties in the NFL. I expect for him to get a long-term extension done with him as well. But he has been a great defensive player with this team, even dating back to when they made that Super Bowl and he put the peace sign in front of Tyreek Hill's face. Now the rest of the secondary, it needs work. They have to go out there and get better players in the secondary because they have one of the worst secondaries in the NFL. A lot of that is because they blitzed a lot and you left your cornerbacks one-on-one -on, -one on an island. But they did a great job against the Philadelphia Eagles and they did a very good job against the Detroit Lions as well. The problem was those cornerbacks got ate up certain points of times in that game because the game planning by Todd Bowles. Just don't blitz as much and just let your guys go out there and just get pressure pressure with Kalaja Kansi and Vita Vea. That's my one knock with Todd Bowles. He will go out there and he will blitz a lot and he will basically risk it for the biscuit on the defensive side, but he's not that aggressive on the offensive side. I like what Todd Bowles was able to do this season and this is just a year after this team was in talks of just letting him go as the head coach because they fired Byron left which and a lot of people thought that he should have been fired as well, but he found a way to get this team to the NFL playoffs. They defeated the Philadelphia Eagles. I Expect for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to be a top team in this division.
You look at the Atlanta Falcons. They desperately need a quarterback. We'll see what they do. The Carolina Panthers, they need a brand new offensive philosophy. They could be a tough team as well, but that's that's easier said than done. That's going to take some time to develop Bryce Young and that offense. And you also look at the New Orleans Saints, an older team in this division. They could be a thorn in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers side, but at the same time, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have beaten every single team in this division. At least once. So that's a great sign to see. I like Baker Mayfield getting his money as well. I've been hard on Baker Mayfield in the past. I'm not going to shy away from it. He did not have the best career with the Cleveland Browns. Yes, he did go out there and help him make the NFL playoffs and he defeated the Steelers. But after that, he did not look good. He was dealing with injuries. He had a groin injury. and He also had that torn labrum in his non-throwing shoulder. This is a guy that got traded to the Carolina Panthers. Didn't look, Did not look great with the Carolina Panthers, but it wasn't all of him because the Carolina Panthers were horrible from the top, from Matt Rule, from being a terrible head coach to Joe Brady going out there and being the scapegoat for Matt Rule. He's just in a tough situation. They released him. He goes over to the Los Angeles Rams, has some success with Sean McVay and that team. They defeat the Las Vegas Raiders on short week's notice, and then he comes over to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's found a home here. But let me know in the comment section below, did the Tampa Bay Buccaneers make a mistake by extending Baker Mayfield? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, when each and every last, when guys, stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. God bless.